Hello all. Today we are going to understand about ferromagnetism more clearly and uh, we will discuss the classical theory of ferromagnetism and also we will try to understand what Curie Weiss law will derive the Curie Weiss law. Okay, so first we shall understand what ferromagnetic materials are. As you all know, ferromagnetic materials are those materials they have which have a permanent magnetization or they have a spontaneous magnetization we will say spontaneous magnetization okay so what is meant by spontaneous magnetization is even if you don't apply a magnetic external magnetic field it will have an magnetization permanently even in the absence of a external magnetic field okay so spontaneous magnetization mean that in the even in the absence of an external magnetic field applied field the substance will possess a magnetization that is what meant what is meant by spontaneous magnetization okay so uh, as you all know now that according to the uh, paramagnetic susceptibility sorry uh, according to the susceptibility and uh, permeability how can we express a uh, ferromagnetic uh, materials we know that in the case of a ferromagnetic material susceptibility is um, greater uh, susceptibility is greater than zero very much greater than zero also the permeability is very much greater than one that is um, we can say that the permeability is very high as well as susceptibility is also very high in the case of a ferromagnetic material. Now, uh, as you know, the case, the ferromagnetic materials, it is almost similar to a paramagnetic material because you know that in the case of paramagnetic materials also, uh, there is an intrinsic magnetic moment within the material. But then, in the absence of the magnetic field, what happens is that because of the random orientation of the uh, magnetic moments, dipole moments in the material, we will not have a spontaneous magnetization in the case of a paramagnetic material. So, uh, basically the structure in the paramagnetic material and ferromagnetic materials are same because they have intrinsic magnetic moments. In both of them have intrinsic magnetic moments. Okay. But in the case of paramagnetic material, because of the randomization, it will cancel out each other. So, in the absence of an external magnetic field, there will be there will not be any net magnetic dipole moment in a particular direction. But in the case of a ferromagnetic material, um, there it, it it has intrinsic magnetic dipoles um, and magnetic moment. But this magnetic moment, even in the absence of an external field, it will be almost oriented in a aligned in a particular direction. So, if it is all random, we can say that effective magnetization within the material will become zero. But in the case of a ferromagnetic material, this uh, magnetic fields or uh, magnetic dipoles will be aligned almost in a particular or it will be oriented in a particular direction. And so, that uh, direction because there is no applied field. So, we, I cannot say this uh, to applied uh, no, or it is aligned in a particular direction, but then it is aligned in, in a direction not in, uh, not with respect to the magnetic field, but in, in a particular direction, effectively there will be a magnetic dipole, uh, dipole, dipoles will be oriented in a particular direction, okay. And that will be the direction of the magnetization, okay, in the absence of an external magnetic field. So, this is the case of a ferromagnetic material and uh, I hope you understood. So, this is very similar to the paramagnetic material except that it has a spontaneous magnetization, okay. And as you have uh, learned in the case of paramagnetic material, it is also temperature dependent because you know that when temperature increases, what happens when temperature increases, this randomization of the oriented magnetic dipoles will take place. If the randomization becomes so severe, obviously what happens, this ferromagnetic, uh, the magnetization, spontaneous magnetization within the ferro ferromagnetic material will get spoiled. And then this above a particular temperature, called the Curie temperature or above a particular, you can say that above a particular temperature, this ferromagnetic material, materials 
also can lose the spontaneous magnetization and they no more become ferromagnetic materials. It will lose its ferromagnetism and they become paramagnetic materials. So that all things uh, we will discuss in the particular video. So now when you think about the classical theory uh, where uh, we have to finally uh, first come to a classical theory and then actually we have to uh, um, derive out the para susceptibility of this ferromagnetic material. But then classical theory is no uh, different from a paramagnetic material. So uh, the final derivation, final susceptibility relation for a, para for a paramagnetic ap ap material will apply in this ferromagnetic materials also. Okay, so I will say the um, equation for magnetization M in the case of a um, paramagnetic material was N into mu square B divided by 3 kT. This is similar to the, this is uh, exactly same for the ferro ferromagnetic materials also because uh, all the fundamental explanation for which we derived the, uh, with which we derived the classical theory of paramagnetic materials are exactly same as in the case of a ferro uh, ferromagnetic materials also. So, this magnetization equation we don't have to separately derive for a ferromagnetic material. It is same as the case of a paramagnetic material. So when it is asked for an uh, exam in the case of a ferromagnetic material, discuss the theory uh, of susceptibility uh, with consisting of susceptibility and everything. Uh, this uh, the, the derivation for M, we you have to use the derivation uh, which we have done in the case of paramagnetic material. Same as that. But then, additionally, there are few modifications because it has spontaneous magnetization. Okay, so I am not going to derive the separately the classical theory for ferromagnetism as a Langevin's classical theory. The same as the case of a paramagnetic material till we um, um, uh, derive the magnetization. Then there will be some modification regarding the magnetic field within the ferromagnetic material, and there comes the deviation in this theory. Okay, so. Uh, let me uh, discuss. So now uh, there is, uh, we know that in ferromagnetism there is some difference with respect to the paramagnetic material because we said that there is an internal field, right? Internal magnetic field. So we, we see that the magnetic domains are almost arranged or it is directed in a particular direction which means that there is, it is as if there is an internal magnetic field existing within the material so that the materials are also that the dipoles are all getting arranged in a particular direction okay and we call this internal field as internal molecular field which is existing within the ferromagnetic material um, even so this has no connect uh, no association with an external magnetic field which we apply so okay so this is this field is purely a, mol a field which is existing within the material which is a peculiar feature of a ferromagnetic material and we this field arises due to uh, mutual interaction okay and uh, interaction exchange we call it as exchange interaction between the molecules so that uh, in, in detail we will not uh, discuss here that is that you will learn uh, later in your higher classes so that because of the exchange interaction uh, between the molecules there exists an internal molecular field called as bi and this internal molecular field bi okay or v is also called it as v's molecular field okay it is also called as v's molecular field because we proposes this theory and uh, we call this um, uh, then now we can say that this internal magnetic field bi is proportional to the magnetization within the material so you know what magnetization in the material is Magne material already within the without any applied magnetic field because of the internal molecular field there is a magnetization within the material so we can say that the magnetization mag this internal molecular field is proportional to the magnetization in the material okay and i can write it as bi equal to lambda into m and this lambda is called the v's constant okay it is called as the 
वीस इज कॉन्स्टंट ओके नाउ नाउ इफ सपोज इफ यू अप्लाई एन एक्सटर्नल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दैट ऑल्सो वी कैन अप्लाई राइट इन सो इफ यू अप्लाई एन एक्सटर्नल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड देन द इफेक्टिव मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो बहुत वेन यू अप्लाई मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दैट मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज ऑल्सो देर एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट दिस इंटरनल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज ऑल्सो देर राइट सो देन द इफेक्टिव मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विल बिकम इक्वल टू बी विच इज द अप्लाइड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एंड देन बी आई विच इज द इंटरनल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एंड यू नो दिस इज बी प्लस बी आई इज लैमडा एम एंड दिस इज लैमडा एम एंड लेट दिस बी इक्वेशन नंबर वन लेट दिस बी इक्वेशन नंबर टू ओके नाउ एस आई इज टॉल्ड अर्लियर एस इन द केस ऑफ द वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिराइव द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द मैग्नेटाइजेशन इन द केस ऑफ पैरा मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल एंड दैट मैग्नेटाइजेशन एक्सप्रेशन इज सेम फॉर द फेरो मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल ऑल्सो ओके सो देन द मैग्नेटाइजेशन इन द फेरो मैग्नेटिक मेटीरियल इज इक्वल टू इन म्यू स्क्वेयर डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री सॉरी बी डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री के टी and obviously the b will be here is the effective magnetic field right in the case of our magnetic material this b will be effective magnetic field because we have to think about the external magnetic field also the internal molecular field okay so this is n mu square by 3 kt then what is effective magnetic field this is b plus lambda m right and this is equal to n into mu square divided by 3 kt Into b is mu zero h plus lambda into m. Okay, so next you know that a susceptibility psi is equal to m divided by h. So I write the expression for magnetization as n mu square uh, divided by three k t into uh, mu zero h. Uh, plus lambda m divided by h. Okay, and uh, this I can write as n into mu square by three k t. Jo, if I divide by h, this expression be this becomes mu zero plus lambda into m by h because my attempt is uh, to talk about m by h. So. Yeah, left hand side also there is m by h, right hand side also m by h. So we'll take these two terms together. So you bring this to the left hand side. So this expression becomes um, m. And before that, let me call this constant n uh, mu square uh, divided by three k t. I'm calling it as a constant. This much I call it as a constant, say c prime. Okay. So then I will call that and say so let m by h minus Lambda uh, into m by h. Okay, there will be a c prime along with that. That is c prime into lambda by m, and this becomes c prime into mu zero. Okay, so if I take m by h outside, m by h into one minus lambda into c prime. Uh, then okay, so one thing I for. Uh, Missed out one thing. This k t you have to put separately. So this the m n mu square divided by three k is actually c c prime. Okay. So then t will be remaining there, right? So that t will be there for this term also. So m by h into uh, t. Similarly, c prime mu zero divided by t that will be there. So if I take m by h outside here, one minus lambda into uh, c prime divided by t, and this is equal to c prime by t into mu zero. Okay. So now, uh, therefore, m by h is a susceptibility. So, uh, or I can write separately m by h as equal to what c prime by t, then divided by one minus lambda c prime by t. One minus lambda c prime by t. Now, uh, if I take uh, this, uh, this if you take multiply t with the numerator, and then I I can uh, give a common denominator. So this becomes c prime by t divided by 
t minus lambda c prime by the whole divided by t this t t will get cancelled and then I can get to write it as then I can write susceptibility m by h is susceptibility so susceptibility becomes c prime uh, there is a mu zero here right I missed out mu zero uh, there is a mu zero here so c prime mu zero divided by uh, t minus lambda into c prime okay now I am substituting c prime mu zero as a new constant c prime mu zero as a mu zero is again uh, permeability right in free space so that is also a constant I am calling this as c okay and similarly I call lambda into c prime as it is obviously you know that this should be a temperature because this is temperature so t minus and this uh, dimensionally that this quantity should also be a temperature and I call this temperature as tc okay and this is actually the Curie temperature I call it as tc so then I can write the susceptibility expression as equal to uh, c prime uh, c so c prime mu zero is c so c divided by t minus lambda c prime is tc so I can write it as tc and what is this this is Curie we have already learned this is Curie's V's low for ferromagnetism Curie V's low for ferromagnetism and what is I also already said in the earlier case in when we discussed dielectric materials there also we discussed about ferroelectric materials as in that case this actually represents the susceptibility relation or a we, we can say this is the Curie V's low for ferromagnetic material but you know that about uh, TC about TC what happens about TC about a particular temperature and if this temperature see if this temperature sorry if this temperature is greater than TC it's fine because when not even it is when it is greater than TC what happens this denominator is positive if T is greater than TC this term is positive and obviously susceptibility will be positive okay but then uh, so I, that means this expression may, is valid but then if you if the temperature is less than TC what happens if the temperature is less than TC this becomes negative right so that means but we have all we already know that ferromagnetic materials uh, show its ferromagnetic nature below the critical temperature from below the critical temperature only it will show the ferromagnetic material behavior so that means but if you apply this relation uh, or if you uh, try look for this uh, the solution for this relation for temperatures less than TC we see that the susceptibility is negative so that means for ferromagnetic materials which is actually ferromagnetic below TC this expression is not valid but instead it is valid above this Curie temperature but above this Curie temperature the paramagnetic materials are no more ferromagnetic but then they are paramagnetic I hope you understood so though this is a low for the ferromagnetic materials this low is applicable for the paramagnetic behavior of this ferromagnetic materials above the critical temperature or above this Curie temperature so now uh, if I draw the graph for this uh, this uh, relation this will become like this that is um, I'm drawing um, here okay so this is um, one more that, that, uh, suppose this is TC and I can write a, suppose this is uh, TC okay suppose this TC then um, this is the critical temperature and uh, this is susceptibility and this is um, a temperature T okay so this is susceptibility and we said that this expression psi is equal to C by T minus TC we say that for temperatures lower than TC this is negative so that means this expression is invalid so I'm, I cannot plot this expression in the case of ferromagnetic material it is not valid but then for temperatures greater than TC this if you plot this expression it becomes like this for 
at critical temperature this is uh, infinity and then uh, after that for temperatures greater than critical temperature you know when the temperature becomes become greater than become greater than tc what happens this denominator become gone increasing and psi will reduce so psi will reduce as shown in this figure so uh, this if you plot you can get such a graph like this but then so that means this is this we are discussing or i can say this is actually the paramagnetic behavior in this range for t greater than tc is the paramagnetic behavior of a ferromagnetic material okay so though we can say that this is an expression for uh, v is curie v is law for ferromagnetism it is obviously the curie v is law for ferromagnetism but you just understand this um, expression has no meaning in the ferro uh, in when the material exhibits ferromagnetism but then uh, after tc after about tc when the materials exist exhibits paramagnetic nature and then there this expression is valid okay so this is all about the curie v's law in the case of a, a ferromagnetic materials i hope you understood the derivation okay so uh, study well thank you very much